Hey BookTube, how's it going today? Um, <clears throat> I had a dream the other night um, that had Steve Donahue in it. So it um, told me that I needed to do another video. The dream didn't tell me that. Um, but if I'm dreaming about Steve, it means I need to do some BookTube. Um, so... Yeah, <clears throat> so this is kind of a book haul and kind of a review. Um, so we'll just get right into it. And I have questions, so if you can answer any of these questions, please let me know. Um, I was at Walmart, and I noticed that they had um, another of the 100-page Batman Giants. Now this one is number one. Um, I was on, like, number 14 or 15, but, um, <clears throat> I didn't get, like, the first few that they put out, and so I didn't know if they had started over, but when I looked at the, um, like, on Goodreads for the 100-page Batman Giant, <clears throat> number one, um, it has a different cover than this. So when I was looking through this, it says um, Mass Market Edition. So I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, I don't know if a Mass Market Edition of a 100-page Batman Giant is different from a 100-page Batman Giant. Um, or why this was even there. Because, like, I don't know if they had, like, a backlog. But I dug through these every time I went in there, and I never saw this before. So anyway, um, this number one here, um, it has the first of, uh, um, oh, how come I can't think of his name? Um, S Snyder's uh, um, Court of Owls um, issue, and I think they do the whole Court of Owls, um, like, trade through these, um, which is a awesome one to do. Um, one of the, the another thing that sucks is like caught in a clayface caper. This is like one of the new things. Whenever clayface is an issue, like the bad guy, he's never just clayface. He's always like somebody else, and then like the twist is that it transforms into Clayface. But they always put, like, oh yeah, it's Clayface in the beginning. So it's like, where is the, like, I don't know. It's just, um, the Batwoman one is kind of cool because it has Lord Deathman, who I think is from the, he originated in the um, Bat Manga bat manga in Japan. Um, and that's a pretty cool villain. Um, another thing that's weird about this is that the Harley Quinn issue they have in here is the one, and I can't remember if it was Zero Year or why they did it. It was like villain something. It wasn't like this last villain's crap cycle they did. But um, it's basically Harley Quinn killing like an entire city of people. And um, it doesn't paint her to be the lovable Harley Quinn that we all know. Um, so that's kind of a weird... That that issue got weird um, receptions when it came out. Um, so it was weird to put that in here. But anyway, so this is just fun. Um, it's the same price as like new comics anyway, and you get a ton more stuff. So... Um, good on that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> now we're going to talk a lot about poetry. So, um, hopefully that's okay. So, <clears throat> um, a lot of our books are still in storage. So, um, I'll go on Abe and just look for anything dirt cheap. And I found um, this Bukowski sifting through the madness for the word the line the way. Um, this is one of the ones published after he died, and I, I got this for like 
three bucks, I think. Um, <clears throat> this was bittersweet in the sense that it was cool to read more Bukowski stuff, but um, my two complaints with this one is the first half of this book is very much um, poems about how awesome it is to be Bukowski. And I, I talked to Zoe about it, and I'm like, yeah, I just don't know. This is just, like, very, oof. And Zoe's like, he had a very hard life. He's allowed to brag a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, it's true. <clears throat> the other thing with this is that um, these books that were published after he died, I don't know if all of them were... But if they are um, edited by John Martin of Black Sparrow Press, a lot of the stuff in here is rewritten. And I never knew that that had happened and that was a thing. And then I was like reading up on it. And not only are lines omitted or um, completely changed, but like chunks are missing some titles are changed for no reason like there's absolutely no reason to change the titles of the poems and um so when i came across a couple of those that i had already seen online as ones that were rewritten it made this book um taste a bit different if that makes sense so that was kind of a I was kind of bummed out with that. <clears throat> but it's a good long read. Um, if you like Bukowski's poetry, it, it's a ton of it. Then, um, I picked up this um, by Douglas Blazik, A Long Rope at the Edge of the Void, um, which looks amazing. He did the artwork, too, for this. This book feels so good. It's just one of those books, you know, there's certain books that when you just pick them up, they feel terrific. This is one of those. Now, that's about the only positive thing I have to say about this. Um, how do I put this? Okay, Blazik was one of the meat poets in the 60s and 70s. And so pretty much anything that I've seen that's written by him before 1978 is very good. Um, then from 78 to 2009, all he did was rewrite his old poetry. And he it turned from being simple and visceral and full of emotion and danger into like um, just a bunch of university dribble with as many obscure words you could fit into a sentence to make something seem profound. And it just sucks when that happens. Um, I don't know if there's anyone else who has done um, that kind of stuff where they took all of their work and rewrote it to republish it. And um, so it's... It's just really depressing. And really the only stuff you could find of his that is in its original form is in old uh, mimeos, like old um, chapbooks and um, um, little magazines of the day. Um, so I've been trying to um, collect some of that stuff. If you guys know of any place um, online that has scans of any of this stuff... Um, that would be awesome to know about because um, it would save me quite a bit of dollars. Um, so I, if, if you like really vague, ridiculous poetry, you know, then you'll love this. But um, if you just want 
like something that you can easily digest but feel the emotion and feel the anger and sadness without having to get a thesaurus out and try to figure out what the hell the dude's talking about um not it's not even like that it's like um wind blows who would stick trauma it's like what the fuck is that you know but that's like the shit that like university type poetry people are like ooh ooh that's so good i love it um so now we're going to talk about some more simple poetry and talk about something else so um i did find um a book online um by um the canadian poet al purdy um, more easily kept illusions. I don't know if you could see. Oh, that looks okay. Um, <clears throat> I found this online. It was at, um, some, uh, university, like, download thing. Um, and this was, um, better. Um, I feel like it's kind of all over the place as far as, like, um, themes and topics, but the way it's written is good, and, like, you, you feel you know him as you read it, and that's what I like. I like to feel like I'm with a buddy, and we're talking about life, and telling each other stories. That's, that's good for me. Um, so if you like that, then you would like this. Um, but it is all over the place. It's not, um, super crazy stuff. It's just, um, oh, there was this one really great one about a bar. Um, and I can't think of what it was called, but, um, so it was like middle of the road for me. Like there was a lot of stuff that, um, I'm not really big on nature poetry. Um, I'm, I guess more into the urban. <clears throat> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, to be honest. Um, but then I read a book by someone who every time I go into like a Barnes and Noble or something, I see this author's stuff and I'm like, I just fall in love with the covers. These are like the best covers I've ever seen. Um, and the titles are good. So let's take a look at it. So this is R.H. Sin, Whiskey, Words, and a Shovel. It's just like great minimalistic artwork. I love how these books are packaged. That's the only good thing I have to say about this. Um, <clears throat> I was reading it. Um, I was reading it to Zoe. We were going through it. And it like seriously. And I don't mean any offense here. Okay. But it sounded like an angsty. 14 year old girl in high school who was like just really upset with the hand that was dealt to her which is fine if that's what you're into turns out that the author is not a 14 year old high school girl but it's a full grown man a dude who is a self proclaimed fourth wave feminist um, I guess you have to research what each wave meant in order to figure out how feminist he is. Um, and it's just like every once in a while, there might be a line that is like almost profound, but it's sandwiched between two of the most trite lines. It, I, uh, I guess what would be a good thing to do would be to, like, have things that I could read out to you so you can understand. But honestly, 
Um, I should have put a lot more thought into this video before I sat down to do it. I actually wasn't even going to talk about that book because, like, it was a one-star book. Like, I didn't even want to give it a star. <clears throat> but that one star is only for the covers. The covers of these books are great. Like, whoever the, like, art designer is on R.H. Sin's work, it's phenomenal. But the poetry that he came from, Tumblr and Instagram, um, so everything, not everything, but there, a lot of things are very short and um, just something that you could fit in a square image that you could put on Instagram. And um, I don't know, I guess he got really popular by being a guy who was writing poems about the horror of girls losing their virginity and stuff. Um, so, I, I don't know. Like, <clears throat> when I'm reading fiction, I don't want to relate. I want to, like, live through stuff, you know, with the writer taking me on a journey. When I read poetry, I want to relate. I want to, like, go, yeah, dude, fuck, I've been there. That's me all over. Oh, man, I feel ya, I feel ya. I have no fucking clue what any of this is, um, as far as that goes. So, if you're into feminist poetry written by dudes, then, um, definitely check out R.H. Sin, because I'm sure you could do a lot worse. Um, maybe. Uh, it's just funny, because, like, when I think about it, like, poetry for hundreds of thousands of years, or however long there have been poets, poets were people who <clears throat> would string words together and get into women's pantaloons for the most part. Um, it's just, it's funny. Like I know there were women poets. I'm not trying to be a sexist pig, but I'm just saying like, um, the poets of the day were always the great lovers, you know, um, the, and all this other stuff. So when I read poetry, feminist poetry from a dude, the first thing I think of, and maybe it's just me being cynical, but the first thing I think of is, wow, this guy's got a racket. This guy, he's he's got the pick of the litter here. And I know that's not how it is, you know, maybe. <clears throat> um, but I think he's happily married and all that. So, you know, whatever. So it's all good. But um, those are just my first impressions, and I didn't really like it. Um, so anyway. If you have read any of these, if you have differing opinions than me, please let me know down below. And if you have any Blazik stuff that is pre-78, let me know. So, take care, BookTube.